what we should do. Hi, Favor. I'm Favor. Welcome, welcome. Yeesh. Welcome. Grasses that my nose is still in now. My minister, Olusheye Babatunde. Good evening, sir. Welcome. Folake. Welcome. Hmm. I was going to say the Queen of Egypt, but I'm not sure. Jesus, Queen of Egypt. Mommy of three. Give it up. Hey. Nali, you are come. Good evening, Tommy Sin. Gift. Welcome, welcome. 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 Oinda Clementina. Welcome. How you guys doing? Hope you are good. There was no point to bring this one. Hope you guys are good. How's your year been? Skincare, AK skincare, welcome. Hi, Uche. Welcome, welcome. Imani. Good evening, Omolola. Welcome. Abayomi. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay. Let me pin the topic. Um, let me pin the topic. Good evening, Dami. Trying to pin the topic. Ancient landmarks and woof. Oh, also correct. Be coming down. And what Christianity? There we go. I just tell people that this extra, the extra beauty, which is there, but the extra beauty is ring lights. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I believe that our guest is going to join us very soon. I haven't noticed him here. I'm going to invite him anyway. Um, I'm going to ask him to join because I want us to do this. No. all right so i believe he will come in soon okay so now we're talking ancient landmarks and woke christianity ancient landmarks and woke christianity why are you doing this to you my minister solomon ayodele who blessed us on sunday good evening and welcome kings welcome why am i doing this a couple of reasons um number one i think we just just live in very interesting times you know the kind of interesting times where even for some of us who've been saved for a while you're you are a part of you one of your mind <laughs> if you know me you know i have i don't have two minds you just i have the mind of christ but the mind of the flesh sometimes you'll be asking yourself that okay is it that i'm wrong is it that i'm overdoing is it that i was sold a lie is it that it's really not that deep? Can we settle this thing? What exactly is happening? So I want to hear from others and hear from a man of God that I believe in, I've listened to, I feel is authentic and he knows what he's saying. That's one reason. Um, I don't know if Pastor Nelson is on the call, but I just got a notification that he's unable to join. Um, Pastor Nelson, if you're unable to join using the request I sent, can you request to be in the live? Can you request to be in the live and then I'll add you on? Right? And then the, the other reason is I feel like, like there are some responsibilities 
that believers in this day and time are not serious about. I think there's the message of grace. There's the message of God looks at the heart. There's the concept of God will meet you where you are, come as you are, which has now turned to stay as you are. Um, so I want to deal with or discover, talk about things around, yes, we are not saved by works, but are there certain works that we need to do while we are here? That's what I want to discuss. I want us to discuss about things like, does the fact that we're in the 20th, 21st century change the way we approach certain things? Does the, is the gospel different now that is in the 21st century? Should it be approached in a different way? If so, how much? If so, in what things, right? Uh, I think, pers I need Pastor Nelson to send me a request to join this video. I wonder what's happening. Okay, Pastor Nelson, I can see you here now. Welcome. Oh, be beautiful. Lovely. Good evening, sir. I was, I was looking like you now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> if uh, you wearing black shirts too. Yeah, so black shirts. I, I, is, I think is, I go uh, look for ch I don't want to remain now. And my husband be get chain, yeah. He has bound the <laughs> chain. He must find this chain in the uh, he has carried the chain. Too bad. Oh, All right, visualize in the spirit. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, oh, I'm good, I'm good. I'm going to move back. This thing is in my face. All right, so I don't know if you caught the beginning of what we were saying or what I was saying. Uh, I'm not sure I did. Okay, I'll just do a brief recap for you. Okay. Welcome, Mr. Banjo. Good to see you. So I was just trying to explain why I'm doing this, right? Mm -hmm couple of reasons. Number one, for some of us who've been saved, I not do AirPods. I'm not part. I saw it. I did not call it. AirPods are me. We are not friends. AirPods where they lost anyhow. You can't define that like pain. But it's for the rich and cool kids. Enjoy. <laughs> right? And so some of us who've, who've been saved for a minute, a long minute, right? Yeah. Uh, and we see certain things happening now. Certain doctrines, certain behavior, certain lifestyles. Sometimes if you are not strong or not convinced about what you are doing by the Holy Spirit, you begin to think that, okay, boy, yeah, maybe I'm actually missing something. Maybe I'm actually overdoing it. Maybe, hi, Ada. Hi, maybe Ada. I, need to, I need to go back and read scripture and get better understanding. Maybe I should calm down. There's that angle. There's the angle of, mm -mm, I'm not saying that they talk makes sense because I see I'm for Bible. Um, so what is going on? How has the message of grace turned to the license to do anything? How has, we know that we are not saved by works, but are there certain works that we need to do? Um, are there certain responsibilities that we have as believers? Or is it a thing of um, come to God as you are and stay as you are, as long as you believe you are saved? That's the only, what is happening? happening um just the fact that we are now in the 21st century means that we need to have a different approach to the gospel and if we need to have a different approach to the gospel how different to what extent in what capacities why right um so yeah a bunch of questions and a bunch of things to discuss and i really wanted someone who i've listened to over a period of time who has proven that is not online theologian or <laughs> some quotable quotes now and and you disappear. But I've seen that he's consistent. I mean, I've said this to him privately and I'll say it now. You know, a lot of people are in ministry in Nigeria and Africa, it's easy for you to have ministerial fire. Or it's easier in a, in a sense. The culture is enabling, mm -hmm. whether for the people or for the real believer, mm -hmm. it's enabling. But people that actually jackpot, as in the real meaning of jackpot is to escape, and you get into greener pastures, it's easier for you to say, ah, we did pray for Nigeria. I see things are working well. But I think that, I believe I said the fire just increased now as you go this up. So I believe that 
he's authentic. I believe that he's real. I believe he knows what he's saying. I see that he's not a man who is doing para ministry and then submit to no one. Everybody knows who he submit to, right? Um, and so that's why I felt confident to bring him here. I think it's also funny, funnier than might appear. Um, I think he's funny and, and I like my life to be interesting. So I'm like, why not bring someone who has spirit, sense and humor? So please celebrate with me uh, and I global i know some of you you are welcome as well how are you doing sir i'm good i'm doing really well i'm actually doing i'm very happy to be here like when you sent me i should be i said ah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a fan thank you awesome thank you so much thank you okay. thank you guys i appreciate the appreciation um, all right, so I'm going to dive into it because I'm hoping that by the special grace of God, <laughs> we can finish in an hour because people have things to do, have things to do and all, right? Um, Holy Spirit, help, help us. Okay, so let's dive. Uh, interestingly, the first time I met you, I had no idea who you were. I remember. Ah, but... I remember. I remember. <laughs> no, I yeah. I did now. I knew you. I, I, first of all, I was very shocked when I came to the house and I saw your husband. I was like, oh, this man of God I see on IG. I'm like, <laughs> so, you know, I said hi to him. I said hi to you. But when you were looking at me, it was like, you're trying to figure me out. Who is this guy? So I was like, I just said hi and I, I did my day now. So. <laughs> I had not known that I was before greatness. <laughs> if I knew who that this was the gates of heaven, not the gates of heaven, but get my drift, right? Funny enough, it was at my brother's house. And mm -hmm. my brother has a myriad of friends, a myriad of aburus. My brother is always going out with somebody, buying perfume for another person, feeding the multitude. <laughs> so I just another aburu. And he was inside one corner with woman. I say, ah, but no, you're in the house, is a house of light. So. You cannot be there for bad thing. But I had no idea, and it was a very casual hello and hi. Mm -hmm. Hey. Pity, you're, not breaking, you're not breaking on my end, though. Please okay. Let your, your network receive the favor of God. Okay. Um, and I don't know, I think maybe it was after you came for Fidel's program at Durability. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that, that's the connection. All right. Interesting. So tell, tell us a little about yourself. Tell me. Um, when you got saved, you talk like you've been saved from the womb, but um, that is true. So, and tell us a bit the, the side we don't see online. Are you always in the spirit? Do you play? Do you sleep? Do you watch Netflix? Um, do you have challenges and weaknesses? Okay. Um, yeah. So how the other side that we don't see? Okay, so about myself. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Nelson. Um, say again, pronounce your surname, yeah, Guam. right? Okay, <laughs> yes, you try at least try, you try, yeah, Guam, yeah, Guam, yeah, Guam. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> no worry. Anyway, um, my name is Nelson, I got saved in 2012. Wow. Um, wow. Yeah. Hey, I got saved in 2012. Uh, you know, I, I had the normal teenage life. So, so I, 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 I don't like to think that my salvation story is dramatic, right? When people just ask me, so how did you get saved? I just say that God was haunting me, right? Um, I mean, everywhere I turned to, there was a sermon playing and it just caught my attention. God was looking for me, more or less. And for somebody who you think that because your story is not dramatic, it's not really, it's not, I make bold to say that it's not, um, drama is not what makes truth true. Right? Drama is not what makes truth true. The fact that it is, it doesn't have to be spectacular for it to be supernatural. Right? So, I mean, I don't even remember how I started speaking with them. I don't. But, I mean, will I still pray tongues till tomorrow? Yes. Because, I mean, it's the Lord. So, um, 
I mean, I went through the normal things every teenager goes through, you know, habits, um, babes. Um, I always like to also say that if I was not safe, I, I would have been a terror. But anyway, um, I be there's that. Then, um, but I mean, the Lord, the Lord caught me, and I, 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 I had been burning for Jesus from when I was saved. Right now, it's not like I had not had times when I had staggered. And I always like to put it this way. The time, I mean, loving the Lord, it's not because it's not because I, I have always been the most disciplined person. I just always like to say it's because I've, I've always been true with the Lord. Let me just put it that way. Like there were times when I was like, Lord, the way I did now, if you don't help me, if you, you don't, you know, and, and God always comes through for his people. For his boy so basically that that i mean and i i know a lot of people who meet me and they're like you know and they basically want so this is the thing about being a pastor being a pastor is everybody wants to be their best self around you right and i'm like or for example when people are talking to me about some things and, and i'm like hold on relax like let's have a conversation i, I want to hear what you're saying you know I, I know you want to quote scripture, but let's talk. How are you feeling right now? You know, and things like that. Uh, so, um, consciously, I mean, I think I learned this from the Bible where Peter, Peter and, and uh, John, they raised the lame man, or they raised, the, they healed the blind man, Paul and, Paul and Silas, rather. They healed the blind man. And then they came and they brought offerings to them and they tore their clothes and they said, we are men just like you. Right. Mm -hmm. I know there's a there's an honor culture that is important because the problem with my generation, the problem with the generation that that is everywhere is we don't know how to stay in the middle. It's always one extreme or the other, right? So honor is very important. Honor is godly. Honor is godly. In fact, I mean PLT, you 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 you're a relationship coach and all you've seen. You've seen, I'm sure you've handled a lot of cases where lack of accountability has <laughs> put people in trouble, right? Honor accountability is the way of our kingdom, right? But at the same time, you know, a lot of people, I learned from my, my man of God, he said, you are, as a pastor, you are the one that is supposed to help people rein it in. And I'm saying this because of your second question, right? Am I always in the spirit? Well, yes. Because being in the spirit is not a mood. It's, it's, I'm in Christ, right? But on the flip side, on the flip side, I mean, for example, I've, I've had I've had a very serious um, three weeks. So the last two weeks, I really spent it doing assessments, doing assignments, and it was very tedious for me. So two days ago, I, I spent I spent two days ago praying. But yesterday, I played video, I played video games till four a.m. this morning because. I will not die. Well, I mean, another thing I've known is a lot of people just want to say, so, so, so how, how do you do it? I just, I just live my life. Nobody will pressure me, right? So I do love the Lord. I've learned to love the Lord. I've learned to love people. Like raising your shoulder up too much, you, your, your hand will pain you. Relax. It's enough, right? So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I've had my own fair share of struggles with things. I mean, habits that the Lord has really helped me from, attitude that the Lord has really worked on. Um, I've had my own, I mean, the Lord has taken me through very painful, crushing processes. Um, I've had my own fair share where I've lost people that I thought were going to be with me for the rest of my life, you know. And and this is the thing. It's Every time I have lost people that I thought were always going to be with me, something new always comes to my life, right? The, it, it's basically the Lord's way of saying, see, I, I am still with you. I still got you, right? And things like that. So it's, I mean. Beautiful. It is what it is. That's not just me. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I mean, first of all, I'm surprised that, well, I don't, it's not, it's not, in my place to be surprised whether i'm surprised or not now 2012 you get saved i mean i would have thought because 2012 is like what 10 years ago 10 years it, ago yeah anyway yeah. sorry i don't know if i should say this. i think everybody is older than me that is my default <laughs> default body and sometimes 
people's age. Like when I see nineteen ninety four inside my marriage counseling forms, nineteen ninety. <laughs> Girl, okay, so now now that I said that one, I've recalibrated in my brain. Okay, but it, it, I mean, it also goes to show how much growth can happen and how that it's not entirely based on longevity of, of time, yeah. but to the things of spirit that you get out of it yeah. and the consistency of what you also said about being true. And I think that's one of the stories of my life as well. I'm not the deepest person. When I say deep, as in me and Jesus together forever. But when it comes to breaking down of Rema using Greek, using Hebrew, using compound word, all of that, mm -hmm. I'm not, I can get there, I, I can study, I can receive light on certain things, but it's not my default. In quote, simplicity is me. Yeah. I like, I think I can communicate well. And in that, because I truly love God and I truly want his message to be heard, mm -hmm. somehow he, he makes people connect even just through that, right? Mm -hmm. So I think the point of being true with God mm -hmm. and being true with fellow believers, mm -hmm. right? Critical points to your spiritual growth and even what we call death, right? Because when the Bible says he seeks people who worship him in spirit and in truth, it's part of it, right? Um, awesome. Okay, I'm going to come back to these extreme matters because um, we spoke about honor, I spoke about extremes. Mm -hmm. I'll come to it. Okay, so next question. Still speaking about salvation. What exactly is salvation? When, when we say we've received the life of Christ, I don't want to get into semantics. Yeah. I give the life of Christ. People will say, I gave my life to Christ. Christ in you, you in Christ, bottom line, right? What exactly is that? And the essence of salvation. What is the difference between being saved and being a very good person? Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, first of all, what is salvation? Salvation, first of all, is not moral excellence. All mm -hmm. right. Salvation is not moral excellence. Jesus. I'm, okay. I think my teacher is good. Salvation, first of all, is not moral excellence. Um because some of the most morally excellent people are monks. They are not Christians. So, I mean, my pastor says this. He says, anyone who, anything that, anything that happened in the Old Testament is not the reason Jesus came. So you need to understand that the Old Testament, they had the law. They had the law. They had, they had a moral code of conduct. So, um, Simply put, what is salvation? Salvation is not just moral excellence. Salvation is the dead coming back to life. That's what salvation is. It is the dead coming back to life. Um, I had a, a preacher a long time ago on TV, and he said this, and it never left me. He said, Christianity is not moral, is not moral, um, I've even forgotten the word. He said Christianity is not is not. He basically was saying Christianity is not moral conduct. Is is not character modification. It is heart transformation. Yeah. yeah. Christianity is not character modification. It is heart transformation. So Christian Christianity is is deeper than a bad man becoming good. Is simply the man who was dead coming back to life in Christ. So I'm going to tie it up this way. Um. When we believe the gospel, we take Jesus' place in death and then take his place in life. He died our death and therefore we live his life. You know, the life that I live, I live by the faith in the Son of God. You know, it's not I that live, it is Christ that lives, you know, through Galatians 2.20, right? Basically, what salvation really is, is Salvation, like I said, is the dead coming back to life. It's exchanging the deadness of the flesh for the life that is in the spirit. When I believe the gospel, I am efficient to that tells of you who were dead in sins and trespasses have he brought to life. Okay, so now um, you, there, was a second, there was a second part of the question you asked. Uh, how, how did you phrase it again? Um, you know, what is salvation? And I forgot the second part. Yeah, what's, you've answered it already, actually. What's the difference between being yeah. saved and being a good person? What's the difference between being saved and being good? So, you see, the thing is, good people are not the, 
Good people are not the people you find in heaven. It is saved people. The Bible says no other name. And, and this is even what we're talking about, you know, um, ancient landmarks and things like that. There is no other name under heaven by which men may be saved. No other name. You can't, um, you know, we live in a world where we want to agree to disagree. We want to say, all right, um, there are many ways to God. Um, it's against my faith to agree to disagree on that subject. We can't say many ways to God. There are no many ways to God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. In fact, the people he was saying this to, these guys were very religious people. They were God's own people according to the covenant. But he was telling them that nobody comes to the Father except by me. So you can want to have, uh, you know, you can want to be moral and everything. It's not good people that get to heaven. It's saved people that get to heaven. And you may be good, in fact, it is possible to be a good person and think that, you know what, I'm going to make heaven and all. Yes, believers are good. But the reason believers are good people, but um, a good man is not necessarily a saved man. It's because we are saved, we are good. We are not good so that we can be saved. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. If you, you think that you're going to be good enough to make heaven or good enough to merit the goodness of God, then you need to understand that the God that you are standing before is a God of blazing holiness. He's a God who, if you're going to compare your righteous standard with his own, you will not, I mean, I always give this analogy. Um, you can keep claiming to be rich until you stand before a liquid you know, you can You can keep claiming to have a very nice wardrobe until you, maybe you stand before Frank Oshibi or uh, my Atapo, right? And things like that. So you can only claim to be good to the degree to the to which the other person or to the degree to which you perceive the goodness of the other person is. But the God that we are standing before, we need his own goodness. And that's exactly what he gave us in salvation, right? You know, today you can take, ask somebody, are you a good person? And they'll say, yeah, I think I really am. I like sometimes I do all those things, but you know, I try my best to still be good and all that. But it's, I'm not comparing you to me. I'm comparing you to God. Mm. So salvation is, is beyond the dead coming back to life. It's beyond the good becoming bad. It is the dead coming back to life. Thank you. Absolutely. Present analogies, who you are comparing yourself to. Yeah. Um, says no man is good but God, right? No man. No man. Right? So that your goodness has to be as a result of the nature of God. I think that's also a very core difference between a good person and a saved person. Exactly. When, because when we become because of Jesus, we have the nature of Christ. Mm -hmm. And this is all the time. We are, we are no longer sinners. So even when believers say, ah, we are all sinners, I'm not part of that. I'm not part of you. We are not all sinners, but I think it's just something we've heard so much over time. And because we keep on saying we are all walking towards perfection, which in a sense is true, in a sense, um, you now, you've now imbibed an identity that is not yours. Yeah. Yeah. So you may, you may fall into sin, you may make a mistake of whatever it is, but you don't have nature to sin. The yeah. difference between a believer and unbeliever is sometimes they can't even believe themselves. Exactly. They just Exactly. Because Gardner Gardens, he was English. Oh, yeah, that's, that's so powerful. Yeah. That is just the nature. And sometimes they don't even know that they, they are doing anything wrong. Exactly. At all. You, when you do what you did last night, there's something tugging at you. And it's even beyond just everybody has a conscience. We know that there's a deeper conviction of the Holy Spirit in you because it's against your nature. Imagine you go to school now, you're teacher said the way we are communicating today is barking everybody barking it's That's so weird yeah like you that it's not your nature so that thing is the main difference and so even when it comes to things like relationship yes i must drive relationship inside this is also why this question of can i marry an unbeliever because it's even nicer than some guys in church it makes no sense 
a nice on be the chef my answer is yes go ahead go ahead do what you like do what you like uh, please <laughs> go forward and process February is coming now. Somebody is still going to ask, can we kiss in the Lord? Do what you like. Do what you like. Do what you like. See? Please do what you like. You keep asking me every year. Every year. Do what you like. But Pastor Nelson, aren't the mercies of God new every morning? Can yeah. the mercy away my sin? Because a loving father cannot condemn me, right? So, 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 so <laughs> So, so this is the thing. Um, I mean, like, like, like you said, take, taking a cue from where you stop. Um, I used to put it this way: the the Bible says that, um, or I used to I used to give this analogy basically. What is a temptation to the believer is an opportunity to the unbeliever. What is a temptation to the believer is an opportunity to the unbeliever. Why the unbelievers? You can't tell the unbeliever stop sinning. You can't tell the unbeliever, stop sinning. But you can tell the believer, don't sin. Why? Because the believer has been delivered from sin. Therefore, he can, he can be told to not act against his nature. But the, as, the same way you can't tell a dog, don't bark. You can't tell an unbeliever, don't sin. He will sin. What the unbeliever does not, the unbeliever does not need reprimanding. The unbeliever needs a life in Christ. Once he gets the life in Christ, he will not sin, you know, then he's empowered to live above sin. That's the first thing, all right? Now, coming over to, you know, the believer who walks in sin, you know, John, John gives us something very strong and James. He said, if you say you hate your brother and you are in the light, you are in darkness until now. You know, they consistently make arguments through scriptures that the believer who consistently walks in sin, claiming to be Claiming to be saved is not sin. It's not saved. It is not saved. Mm. Because it's against the nature. There is a walking of the spirit within. In fact, Paul sent a letter to the church at Corinth. Right? Corinth is the church nobody wants to pastor. There are letters that are the longest, and he wrote a second one. It's very difficult. So Paul sent a letter to them. And he said, he said, the person that is um uh, I mean, Corinth is a city that was right with sexual immorality. So Paul was basically saying that, I mean, sexual immorality is so, is so, it has so pervaded your city and entered the church that somebody is dating his father's wife and he's even coming to church and they are open about it. He warned them about it. Then he sent another letter and said, guys, the person who does this thing, let that person be. Um, um, how did the Paul put it? He said that the person who, who has done this thing cast the person away from you, lest a little leaven levies the whole lump. So, I mean, Paul even says things like this. You know, a lot when we say things like this, a lot of people can think, oh, it's, it works. No, Paul said, let this not be once mentioned amongst you. It means that because of the workings of grace at work in the believer, lost sin, but you know, the firewood, all these things should not be mentioned amongst us. It should be alien to hear that. It should be alien to hear that your 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 friend who is a believer is talking to your girlfriend. Oh, they are, they are talking. No problem. It should be alien to hear that you are afraid. Your heart is beating. It should be alien to hear that a believer duped you. It should be alien to hear that a believer beat his wife. There are things that should be strange to hear. There are things that should not be once, once mentioned among us, not because of works, but because of the effective working of grace in the life of the believer. So James, John, I mean, this is not a teaching, so I'm, I'm just going to try and drop here and there. If you hate your brother and you say you are in the light, he says you are in darkness until now, meaning if you walk in, if you walk in sin. Now, there's a difference between that and 1 John 2, where John tells us that I write to you that you sin not. I write so that you sin not. However, if you sin, remember you have an advocate to the Father. It means that we will make mistakes. Right? We will make mistakes. I mean, there are believers who are even struggling with habits and they fall again and again. All right? And that's not what we're talking about. We're talking of the believer who consistently is operating in error, is 
staying there, he's working with people. In fact, when you begin to make excuses for it, you know, biblically, you are not one of us and you should be casted out from amongst us. That's exactly, and you know, Jesus, how Jesus said the same thing that Paul is saying is, Jesus basically said, he said, if you carry, if you go and apologize to your brother and he does not answer you, take another person to him. If he does not answer the person, bring him before the elders of the church. If he does not answer, bring him before the whole church. If he does not answer, cast him away because he is not a believer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so there is a way that there, there's something that is expected of believers, not just because we are supposed to act well, but because there's the effectual working of the spirit that is at work in our lives that is supposed to produce conduct. So this is it. The believer is not trying to live right to be right, but there is a working of the spirit that works in the believer that produces right living. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's an effectual working of the spirit in the believer that produces right Living. So you have a loving father that does not condemn you. Yes, but if you continually walk in sin, you are unrepentant, you are reprobate, we will make a very heavy case to say that you are not saved and you should be cut out from amongst us. Mm. So, yeah. Oh, I have a couple of questions floating in my head, but I know that one of the things that um, God needed for us to do tonight is to make things as simple as possible. So no yeah. technical deep revs, remas, and all of that. I need... I'm, 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 I'm not contradicting myself. I need the entry mark to be as low as possible. Okay. This is me interpreting English. Mm -hmm. But God just told me to keep it very simple. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying to answer as safely as possible, but I trust that you'll be able to answer it. So, two in one question. So, I'm not saved by works, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm abilities yeah worked work the work of he who sent us mm -hmm. right the bible says by their fruits you shall know them and some of these fruits they are action points yeah um, it's, it's is there anything how like without sounding contradicting myself what are the responsibilities that come with being saved okay so how do i, I salvation um so when i like um going to church going for evangelism dressing is um mm -hmm. out of the scope or do i just receive grace and you know go as the spirit leads so i, I usually like to put it this way I, I did a teaching one time called living by revelation because as soon as i got saved one of the things i, I got to find out was the revelations in scripture or the, the, the seeing the things that Jesus did for us, they have lifestyle implications. So, mm -hmm. for example, Ephesians basically tells us, he said, forgive. Even as Christ, for God's sake, hath forgiven you. So, because we are forgiving, we, there's nothing we should not be. So, this is the thing. You can't receive the forgiveness of Jesus and remain a witch. You type people in your chest. You can't do that. An unforgiving Christian is a paradox. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, um, another thing is, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The fact that you have been bought with a price, you don't live your life the way you want. You live your life in accordance with the one who bought you. You know, I like to put it this way. I said life is supposed to be lived in accordance with the one who gave life. Mm -hmm. Or in accordance but, to what the one who gave life said. Friends, um, your own grace is to dress well. God has not given me that direct revelation. Um, my own grace is to disciple young people. Is this not legalism? Doesn't God look at the heart? God looks at the heart. He does. However, if it is in your heart, it will show in your acts. Mm -hmm. If it is in your heart, it will show in your acts. So this is the thing. Um, it's just like saying that, you know those memes that you see someone with a straight face and frowning and he says, I'm very happy today. That's what, that, that's how it seems when you say things like it's in the heart, but then we are not seeing it. You know, I mean, the Bible teaches moderation. The Bible, you, 
you can't be picky and choosing when it comes to things that scripture say. Is it that you pick all of it or you pick none of it? That's why we have heresy today that is called progressive Christianity. If it's a lie, it's a lie. You can't pick and choose. You can't say, I believe this, but I don't really believe this. We are saved by grace through faith. But because we are saved by grace through faith, right? Grace has done a working in the life of the believer. And then there is so, you know, I think early time, early 2000s, early 90s, there was something that we used to hear people say, don't you know you are a Christian? Because there is an expectation that is, that, I mean, many of them understood it legalistically, all right, in terms of um, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. But the next verse says, it is God that works in you, both to will and to do. So this is the thing. You make a mockery of salvation when you say that it is just in the heart, and then we are not seeing it. Do you know what it means for the Almighty God to be at work in you, to will, meaning to desire, and to do? So he works in you to desire it and works in you to carry out those actions. So when you just say, it's just in my heart, you are lying. That's exactly what John tells us. You are lying. You are lying. All right. So there is something that is expected of the believer not just because believers are good people, but because there's an effectual working of the spirit that is at work in your life. Because at the end of the at the end of revelation is manifestation. What do I mean by that? At the end of revelation is manifestation. At the end of knowing that Christ has forgiven you, okay? At the at the, the end of knowing that Christ has forgiven you is that you can forgive all things. At the end of knowing that you've been bought with a price, is that I don't live my life the way I want to live. All right? Among many other things, at the end of knowing that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, it's not your body or your choice. So, it is God's temple and his choice. It's what he says I do. Among the many, many other things. All right? So, whatever God says, I carry out. So, um, when we look at scriptures and look at what God has said, we live our life in accordance to the to the to what the one who gave life said. You don't you don't you you may use a chair as at a ladder, right? Or to prop you up. And it's true, it, it works. It works. Mm -hmm. But that's not what it was designed for. And you won't get the best use of it that way. So, Thank you. if God said this is the way to live life, then living life that way does not make you foolish. It makes you wise. Because life is supposed to be lived with what the creator, with the original intent the creator has. And you see, I, I love everything you have said living with the um, creator's intent. So you've been saved by God and yet you want to live by yourself. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it make no sense that, that the person who created and saved you, he's also the one who can sustain and aid you through the entire process. Yes. Um, I feel like we even shortchange ourselves mm -hmm. when Sarah has come, taught us, giving us the ex, called us into the office to write the exam. And they made us quote and unquote VC of the school. That's a weak analogy, but and he says just follow this template. But you feel you can now run the school that you did not set up by yourself in the first place. You are going to yes, and even yeah. if this is doing well, it is doing really bad compared to how good it can be. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's about I'm not being envious of the wicked. Because even look, though it looks as if they are prospering, and whatever prospering might mean, whether it's in wealth, whether it's in days, whether it's in beauty, whether it's in luxury, whatever it is, whether it's in having things easier than you, at the end of the day, I don't want to use the word better, but for lack of a better expression, you are still better than them because they don't have the life of God. Yeah. So you in yourself, you, you are doing yourself a great disservice when you have the almighty helper in you and you decide to do things your own way. And I always ask myself or ask other believers, why does Jesus always get the shorter end of the stick or usually get the shorter end of the stick in your life? You've gone to school to study for a course. 
six years, seven years, five years, you wrote all the exams, you studied, you crammed, or you memorized, or you understood, whichever what you did. You did overnight. You kept your feet in cold water. You drank coffee. You read with ATM lights. You read with lamppost lights, street lights. You did everything. Those of you that cheated, you did, you did Voltron to ensure that you pass this course. Before you even finish NY, all your uncles in Abuja started looking for contacts, looking for a job, your LinkedIn profile, you went and removed cobwebs. You did everything. Now you're practicing as you're practicing, you are still reading, you are still getting case study, everything to practice according to the templates. When they say, oh, this ACCA is now old, there's ACCA 3.0, you're upgrading to it because there is a template, there is a guide. And if you don't go according to that guide, you're not going to be relevant in your industry. Yeah. But Christ, we feel like we can wing it. Hmm. It's, it's not that deep. Mm -hmm. It's giving us them to I know what they are doing. Okay, then what? So when you get to heaven, your account will be, oh, that pastor was doing this, so I did that. I feel like if you can work so hard in every other area of your life, why is Jesus getting the shorter end of the stick? Why is there story, excuse, and reasons to justify you not complying with a life that will serve you and your generation better? Yeah. My, 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 my pastor says this. He says, every other thing you've been consistent and you're good at will stand as a witness against you. In, um, for, as in when compared to your Christian life. So if you, I mean, whatever circular skill you have now, right, you, you worked at it tirelessly. You spend time. But when it comes to prayer, I don't really know why my prayer life is the way it is. But you're consistent in something else. You spend time, you spend four years studying a course. If you graduated with a first class, the course that you're not using, yeah. if you graduated with a first class, the more weakness against you. The more weakness against you. I mean, okay, let's even use academics. You've you probably watched a series straight before from the beginning to the end. I have, I have, I have. You watched it straight, unbroken. You finished it and you were like, wow, I'm accomplished. I feel accomplished now. You know, you've done it. But when it comes to Bible study, you are doing a word for today. You said, judge yourself. Yeah, yeah. You see, PN, you don't need just a word. You don't need to read the whole chapter. The Lord can deliver nations to you in a word. I mean, that can happen, but is that the MO? Is that the everyday? And it's this same issue. Let's, let's talk about some habits um, as believers, as woke Christians. And I think you shared a video about this a week ago or so, maybe a bit longer. Everything is not prayer. And, you know, sometimes I think we are funny. We are funny. Everything is not prayer. Yet, the largest prayer convention in this nation is here with us in Nigeria. You are there. 6 a.m., 7 a.m., midnight, you are there. It's not prayer Nigeria needs. Yet, you are at those prayer meetings. And then I begin to think, you can gather and pray in the online world, but your personal prayer prayer altar is a challenge. Well, there are more and more churches and there should be more and more godly churches. Good churches but yeah. it's in. We go to church on Sundays. We worship, hopefully. We praise. Um, we pray, hopefully. We dance when it's our favorite song. When is Messi Chingwa and Dressing? Anyone else that we don't know don't deserve our dance. But it's a Friday. It's it looks a little different. It doesn't look like Sunday. And I'm wondering, I know there's this thing that happens with children. Um, for those of you who have children on the call or you have um, nephews or nieces, you understand this. Your niece or your nephew or your child in your house, they will never eat a bar at home, never, or beans. But when they get to school, they are, the head of school will tell them, ah, shall they finish his tie a in school? Or your child is up and down, shouting bedtime. What is bedtime? <laughs> they will never see. And then you get to school. so quiet, quiet. I am wondering what is going on. 
children have a compliance mechanism that they operate with in school. They know this, they know what I see other children do, I do. They know I want my teacher to start, so I behave like this. Even my own child, I've had to reprogram his brain. He'll go and tell me, why are you making, you make noise in class? He said, mommy, home is for playing and school is for walking. I said, look at you. So sometimes I feel like maybe believers have that thing subconsciously, maybe oh, not yeah. even. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. God, and this is where God is. But on Monday to Friday, yes, they believe in their hearts. I'm a Christian, but somehow it doesn't translate to doctoring numbers. Mm -hmm. Somehow it doesn't how they dress. Sometimes it doesn't. And I'm tired of the debates like, when you are going to the beach, you can wear bikini because it's dressing compliance with the environment or where you are. And I'm so confused. So I'm like, are you holy or are you in the spirit? And I like something you said earlier. Are you in the spirit on Sunday and not? Because we're always in the spirit, right? In my, in my, we don't even call it church. We call it the gathering of kings, right? We don't even say welcome to the presence of God. We say welcome to the gathering of kings. So, what is going on there? Why are we one way in church and it's not translating? Why, why are we not praying? Because you don't need to pray long. And I remember some of us as pastors have said some things now and then that people have now taken to the extreme. Because sometimes we do say, sometimes you have to um, swap longevity for intensity because there are times like that. But when it now becomes God is not deaf, you don't need to be praying loud and long all the time. I'm like, hey, how are you coping? How are you doing it? How are you activating angels? Or waiting they dance on top of your destiny? What are the issues here, PM? I think it's two things. Um, first of all, it's two things. First of all, God... Sorry, PM, while you are saying that, first of all, God, do you think it's hard to be a believer in these times? So you answer two of them together. No, actually. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. If anything, I would say it's comfort that has spoiled us. <laughs> it's comfort mm -hmm. that has spoiled us. If we had a little more persecution, we'll be serious. Just a little more, we'll be serious. I think it's comfort that has spoiled us. But that, by the way... Um, <laughs> Do you think it's comfort that has spoiled us? Do you think if we had more persecution the way we are now, do you think we will stand or we will be wiped away? So, if the not, thing is, if we, have, if we have more persecution, you hold on to Jesus properly or you are not holding him at all. So we will know those who are following our Lord and Savior. Okay. So, but, but as that aside, hmm, I think it's two things. Number one, um, People have learned to use God as a charm. And number two, um, I, I, I mean, I'm saying this with trembling knees, because in as much as I'm a pastor, I'm, there are some things that are heavy in my mouth. So, um, number one, like I said, people have learned to use God as a charm. But number and number two, in mo in many places, the pulpit has enabled this. So, let me explain this. Number one, I mean. We've learned to seek God for the for the um what's the word? We've learned to seek God for the for the bread that He gives rather than the bread that He is, like my, my pastor says. For the bread that He gives rather than the bread that He is. So continuously we have gone to God for our gigging bread rather than seeing Him as the bread of life. So I mean my pastor put, posted something many years ago. He said, when, when, um, what, when what you pray for the American government gives, you know, if all of your prayer points is, Father, give me, give me, give me, grow up. Grow, grow up. So, I mean, I came to the UK. You know, I, I, I mean, it's a long story. Um, but I know the, the Lord sent me to the UK for things that will begin to unfold in due season, right? But coming here, I didn't envy the you. I didn't envy them. I felt sorry for them. I felt sorry for them, you know. I went out to evangelize two days ago, three days ago. Got four people who saved. I am a friend, right? No, he's not a friend. I don't know him. 
but I and someone else, we got we got four people sick, you know, and you know there are these two girls. One was Romanian, one was Polish. They said this 15, 25 minutes of conversation we've had, it has taught me more than I I knew. One of them said in five years of Catholic school. One of them said in eight years of Christian education. We met two Chinese ladies. They didn't know Jesus. They didn't know Jesus. So we now evangelized them. And of course, you know, spiritual gifts came up, words of knowledge. I started speaking to them. And I said, does that make sense? Because I said, oh my God. And, you know, things like that. And I was like, the reason I can tell you this is because I'm hearing God and God is personal. He's not just a force. He's not just a being. It's personal. So for me, coming here, I mean, I, I sincerely, I used to say, there's nothing fresher, there's nothing fresh in four jackets or four jackets. There is no, if any believer who, in Nigeria, I mean, you have to pray for, pray for Nepal to give you life. You have to pray for a good job. You have to pray for all these other, you have to pray for many things. But you come here and the things are waiting for you. So when you learn to see God as a means to an end rather than the means in, rather than the end in, it, in himself, you will, if your Christian work has been limited to needs, God, I mean, you hear a lot of believers pray and you wonder, who is the God in this relationship? God, I give you three months. If I don't get married, I will stop serving you. Are you aware you didn't elect him into power? He's good. He's a good father. He's loving. But come on now. Come on. You know, and when we pray, we are, so when, when I tell people, for example, I'm spending quality time praying, they are saying things like, ah, why? What's going on? For me, prayer is beyond what, you know, I saw someone say something. He said, when you understand the purpose, it keeps you on your feet. And another person puts, it puts you on your knees. If you realize what God will have you do with your life, because Anything God will have you do with your life is, what God will have you do with your life is beyond you, it's about him. You are too small to be the center of your life. Let me say that again. You are too small to be the center of your life. The purpose of your life has to go back to the one who gave that purpose. And again, we have to realize we are the purposed. We are not the purpose of our life. We are the purposed. All right? So, I mean, when I saw those things, I just keep on thinking that, ladies and gentlemen, so in many Nigerians, they leave Nigeria, they don't have a prayer life anymore. Of course, there's the fact that the UK and many other European countries have an ungodly work culture, all right? But if you realize that God is the purpose for living, you know, I mean, okay, so, so, so I, I put up a tweet one time and someone misunderstood me because it's, it's the bread app. Even if you say good morning, somebody can be upset. I said, the and with due respect to the morning prayer platforms, I'm not upset. In the early morning prayer platforms, they stopped praying for material needs and they start praying for missionaries and the cause of the gospel and following God's plan for your life for one month. Will the attendance drop? Will you still tune in? It, you know, it must take very, very simple. So, I mean, it's so. On, and then on the other hand, when I've said the plat the pulpit has empowered it in terms of we're always having programs like my time has come, your goal is there, your destiny is now, you know, tomorrow, the God of speed. Is God all those things? Yes. Does God prosper? Yes. Does God provide? Yes. Does God do all this? Emphatically, yes. But you cannot make an aspect of God the aspect of God. You cannot serve the provider. You cannot serve the healer. You cannot serve, um, you have to serve God Almighty, the multi-breasted one. The one who, as true as it is that he provides, is as true as it is that you must be consecrated to his plan. You will get there. Where are you getting to? Where? Where? So, so it's two things. Number one, we've, let me flat, flip it. Number one, the pulpit has empowered and enabled. And number two, Two, we've learned to use God rather than serve him. We've learned to seek God for the bread that he gives rather than the bread that he is. I mean, I and a couple of my ministry team and my discipleship ministry, we were having a 21 days prayer and fasting. And in those 21 days prayer and fasting, we, we didn't raise any 
prayer points of, oh Lord, this year, this year, save us, please. It's not because those things are wrong. They are, they are, please, pray about your needs. God cares, okay? But we were praying prayers like we refuse to lift our soul to vanity. We refuse to have unclean hands. We, re we were praying prayers of consecration. Because at the end of the day, spiritual disciplines don't change God. They change us. How can in all of the 21 days of prayer and fasting, all you are praying for is a new car, a new house, a fine wife, and all those things. All those things will pass with time. They will pass with time. So, so see, I mean, believers, we need, to, we need to wake up. What exactly is our focus? What exactly is our focus? Who is serving who? Who is serving who? What exactly is our focus? I mean, TLT, I hope I hope I answered your question and I didn't get upset. <laughs> Go so well. So yeah. Upset. But you know, even like when I make some of these my car videos and stuff, I keep repeating over and over that I'm not angry. If I'm angry, I'll tell you people. When I'm at home duly, I will send the memo out. And it's not even a calling out. It's really a calling up. Yeah. It's a calling up. It's a calling up to the standards that Christ has created for us. And I tell people, really, if it's not even about me trying to lord myself or be boastful or bashful or whatever, um, but I will talk as long as I see it inside scripture, oh, I'm going to say it. And as long as it's happening around me, I'm going to say it. Because we are watchmen, right? Yeah. And it will be of you to leave your front door open, leave your gate open, and go to bed. <laughs> most of you are living inside this Lagos, Nigeria. It's foolish. The Bible says that a person without self-control is like a city without city walls. Without walls. Yeah. But under, you can be, come under attack at any point in time. So even me, the day you see me do anyhow, say anyhow, behave against what you see in scripture of something I've taught or shared, without insulting me, please, by all means, tell me. Because we must align. And I like what he said. God is not to be used, he's to be served. Yeah. We have become clear with God is our friend. I'm a friend of God. God is my lover. I'm no longer a servant. I'm a son of he's truth. Lord, he's your Lord. And so you say, yes, sir. And so you say, my Lord, may I? May I not? <laughs> he's my Lord. I also think that when people say things like, oh, we're not servants, we're not servants we are sons is bad bible study it actually is bad bible study we are both sons Amen. and servants paul said i'm a bond servant of god so you are the word is duly noted is doulos you are a the word doulos is even slave so you are a servant of christ <laughs> my lord may i, I no <laughs> no you may so as in, bond servant, that is, it, it gives a picture of your in chains. Yeah. This chains is not so. This chains is, yeah. is direct the course of, of your life. Yeah. This is where we are, is this way, mm -hmm. not this way, this is the path. And so you are mm -hmm. bound because there is a destination, and this is the road that leads to that destination. Yeah. So you go that route means that you don't want to get to that destination. Or you want to go through a longer journey. I know, see, and God loves you so much that he's really trying to help your life. Mm -hmm. Some people that, let me, you've done your own, let me experience my own. You don't know that even if you get to the end, the kind of injury you might have at that end there, mm -hmm. it can even you preach the gospel because you might now start preaching with the gospel with a tint of pain, with a tint, yeah. of, a tint of personal experiences because you yeah. have gone that God did not send you. Um, cute, cute little girl. He's cute. He's also a pastor and engaged. And also engaged. Just saying. Also engaged. All right. Um. So I mean, here now, somebody didn't have not hear about your Jesus. In in this 2023, somebody have not hear about your Jesus. Guys, we shouldn't be discussing pedestrian matters anymore. We can not, this is what Paul is talking about. That I, I want to give you meat. I desire to give you meat. But here we are still about covering breasts. Come on. 
you go and say, check them. Somebody have not heard about your Jesus. That means pay if they die today, except God has mercy. I don't know. Let me not get into all of that. What, what, is, the, what, is, what is their faith? Your neighbor is not saved. You are sleeping well at night. You just with this person. You exchange Snapchat pictures with this person. And you are saying, I've sown the seed. And this issue of I've sown the seed, I've sown the seed. Are you only called to be a sower? Who go harvest? Are you not a harvester? Like, like I said, every other thing you are bold about is a weakness against you. Okay. If you are, you are bold to talk about love, you are bold to talk about feminism, you are bold to talk about um, you are bold to talk about feminism, you are bold to talk about equal treatment of women, you are bold to talk about what churches are doing wrong, you are bold to talk about why pastors should not be rich, but in reach the gospel, you say, I all I do is lifestyle evangelism, you are a clown, you are a joke. I just, I just have to put it to you. <laughs> because, because people are funny. Yeah, you see, you people, like Pastor Nelson said, is for Bible study. When the Bible says, go into all the world and preach the gospel, even Jesus was preaching, as in using mouth. He was using mouth. Imagine, like, from place to place. When you find donkey, climb donkey. Otherwise, they climb mount. When you say Jesus went up a mountain, it's not table and chair. My, mm -hmm. my Jesus prayed to, uh, he, Jesus did not use only lifestyle because if it was only lifestyle, he didn't need to be traveling from pillar to post. Yeah. So why do you now lifestyle is the only one and only method? Doesn't that kind of suggest laziness? Doesn't that kind of suggest irresponsibility? Doesn't that kind of even suggest... I know sometimes, to be very honest, even me till today as I speak to you, it's not easy even when I get to the streets and I say I want to talk to somebody, or God tells me as I'm locking my car inside Maryland Mall to go and watch movies, say talk to this person. Even me till today, I won't lie. Sometimes it's not easy. I don't always obey the promptings. I will not lie to you. It still feels a bit weird sometimes because in my flesh, I'm not what if this person says this, what if person says that? But I found that the more you do it, the more you grow yeah. in it. Yeah. Sometimes, if the person says no, okay, now you are dead, no. Now you are no longer a believer, no. Now you no longer have um, gifts of the spirit, no. It changes nothing. You've done the assignment, you've done the work, glory to Jesus, you keep it moving. Ultimately, but the more you... when you go out to evangelize and they reject, and they seemingly reject, they are not rejecting you, they are rejecting the message. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't feel rejected. It's not about you. Oh. Okay. Let's begin to wrap this up. Let's begin to wrap this up. Guys, there's, there's so many other weighty things that we should not be dragging all these other things. Okay. Let me ask you more questions. I will call it a night. Um, yeah, so you look like you have a lot of questions. So you're trying to say oh, which one, which one. <laughs> Yeah, but also touched on um, different questions okay. in your answer, repetitive, and yeah. also because it's also, um, and also because some of us have lovers at home that we need to make love to, in, and children that will not sleep until mommy comes to bed. So, yeah, these are the issues. Okay, let's talk about this online theologian, theologians. Check is it O or O? My English people, theologians or theologians? Theologians, theologians. Yeah. Okay. Theologians. They say that some of them argue a lot. P and you. Okay, you're back. I'm here. Me. Yeah, I'm with you. I can hear you. They say that these are fathers. They do not understand grace. They do not have full revelation like we now have the full revelation um they did not some of them were they were trying to be controlling they did not tell us the full truth they kept us attached to them and maybe that's part of what you were talking about in terms of the pulpit has pioneered certain things they wanted us to be attached to them and keep coming back to them for signs and wonders and miracles and uh, so every time we want um a prophet to speak to us and so there's a lot of bashing of the fathers and while in a sense, I understand that, yes, some things, some things, I don't know how to explain it without sounding rude myself. I feel like you teach what you know per time, genuinely. 
I don't yeah. know if phrase is correct, but revelation is progressive. I mean, revelation is revelation is revelation. But our understanding of it we per time growing understanding of revelation. Yeah. Exactly. So how where do we put the fathers? Are they to be bashed? I don't think so. I think it's generation to generation. There's a bridge without a lot of the fathers. This gospel that we are even saying that we know more than them now. Where would we be? And I think about the fathers. Some of these fathers have been in ministry for 30 years, 40 years. Are they yeah. counseling? Are they blocking? Yeah. What is going on? How do we help younger people know that there's a place for the fathers? There will always be a place for the fathers. I, I think for me, I'll just simply say, because like I said, time is running fast. So all I'll just say is this. I mean, we honor ministry gifts for their work sake, for their work work sake. So, a man could preach something false and not be false. So, a false there's a difference between a false teaching and a false teacher. A false teaching is a teaching that is not biblically sound. A false teacher is someone who is not even saved. All right, he's someone who is dubious. He wants to make milk God's people take advantage of the flock. All right. So, I mean, when we see people like Baba Deboe that have been in ministry for over 50 years, we see people like Bishop Poideko that has been in ministry for 46, 47 years. We see people like Omar Opai. You know, they've been in ministry for many years. If anything, they deserve honor first. They deserve honor first. Now, must we agree with them on everything they said? No. You know, we, no, we don't have to agree with them on everything they said. But at the same time, we can't now, because of, you know, a few things that they've said wrong, now bash their work or speak like what they've done is irrelevant. I used to tell people, I said, there's a way we who know the truth and who are sound talk. We talk like ministries who are really large, who don't really know much, that they should shut down. Okay, for example, if RCCG shuts down today, like they just shut down. What's going to happen? Who will fill the void? If Bishop David Oede people just really say just collapses today, what is going to happen? Who is going to who is going to step into those very large size size ninety four shoes? Who's going to step in? We need to pray for them. That's number one. But number two, we need to honor them. We need to honor them. Now, they may have said things that are wrong, but why do we honor them? For their work sake. They honor, yeah. honor them for the ministry. I think that's just simply now. Sometimes when I find people who are really very harsh, I probably was there right, at some point many, many years ago, but um, it's immaturity too. Yeah. They also need somebody to call them and say, calm down, relax. And I think because when I hear people shout a lot, about bashing the fathers or about bashing the church, it's very easy or almost easy for me to conclude that they don't carry much weight. Oh, yeah. Some of them don't. Many of them don't. You know how they say it's small people that cause big problems in organizations? Oh, yeah. Yeah. People that are not in any committed team or department in church, people that don't show up for meetings. You see what's wrong in everything. But and when you're tiny, is there your potential husband and wife are there your children are there oh, come on even if you will want to build you will want to fix you will want to help you will want to suggest ways to you will do everything you can to cover anything that will cause shame or pain because your heart and your investment is there and then i think if you are bashing these fathers first of all it's very difficult for you to be elevated to that position Oh, yeah. As a father, yeah. well, whatever you dishonor, you repair. It's it's just a law of life and the spirit. Yeah, you cannot become it. You, As you deceive people with all your gimmicks, charisma, and everything. You get there. When the real weight of the work, of ministry, of taking care of God's people falls upon you like this, hey, we will see what you will deliver because it's what you have that you give, right? You see people in ministry for 30 years, 40 years. It's not a beans. This nice yeah. thing that you're doing here, talking, giving you lines, giving you rema, quoting scriptures, that's the easy part, yeah. quote and unquote, the easy part. Yeah. The real on the phone for three hours. 
helping yes. someone you told them not to do. That's exactly what I wanted to say. You warned them. Uh, you told them koro koro like this. This is when you are in a you are in UK. Somebody is calling you from Australia. Time difference, and you have a class tomorrow, and you must speak to them and go for your class and come out with distinctions. That's the real work. Yeah. When you know that God called you, but what God called you and showed you is not looking like what is happening, and you stay there. That is the work. Yes. This fancy one of wearing fire. That's this. You counsel people with what you are struggling with, with the exact pain you are feeling. <laughs> I remember I woke up one morning. I woke up from a dream. There's a, there's, a, there's a guy who is my, my disciple. I, I train him. He's, I'm responsible for him. I woke up that morning. I had a dream. I had a dream, but I had a dream that he died. And I knew what God was saying to me. I woke up. I had a lot. Like I was under immense pressure, wedding plans, many things. Like it was a lot. If you are married, you know wedding plans. You know what I mean by wedding plans because Jehovah be a shield. So I woke up. I was stressed. I was everything. But it does not change the, the fact that I must pray for him. So throughout that morning, it, and it was like God was saying, I, this is your stress. Leave, this is your stress. This is not the issue right now. This is not the issue right Face this one. So I faced it and I was just praying. I was just praying. So, I mean, I'm, and, and, and I dare to say this. The, the, all things that have to come that come with ministry, they are not luxury. Yeah. They are not luxury. They are a necessity. They are just tools for a job. They are tools for a job. Many of the people who complain about you know the honors of ministry, and I've, I've, I mean, with due respect, I've come to notice that they are small-minded people. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. So, yeah. I hear but, you. Um, we're going to conclude now. Um, if you listen to this again, I'm going to put up this live till tomorrow and I'm going to move it to my YouTube. Please follow Pastor Nelson. I'm sure a lot of people are already doing that. Those who are not following you already, please do that. I think my final words would be, I've said it, there are so many weighty issues. Yeah. Um, you, if salvation was about you being saved and going to heaven, that's, you will have dropped dead immediately you were saved, like they would yeah. say. There has to be there yeah. has to be. God has not kept you alive 24 years. Your salvation is sure. You are saved. You trust in God. You believe God in your heart. You confess just as your Lord and Savior. You are saved. What next? What That's next? the real thing. You are going to heaven. Yeah. I think my house is my house. No matter what I go and do outside, my house, I'm coming back to my house. Yeah. This is my house. That one is what happens between when I go out and when I come back in. That's what we should be asking ourselves. God kingdom. Jesus died, woke up, and he was going about teaching about the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And he handed, he entrusted these things to us. Is a trust. Yeah. Is a trust. And so your life should really be about this kingdom. Whether, whether it's in your relationship, whether it's anything. I always tell people, whatever you're doing, what is the kingdom quotient in it? Yeah. Because when it goes through the fire on that last day, what's going to come out on the other side of the fire is the kingdom quotient of your marriage, your business, your job, your children, your family, your beauty, your English, your ministry, whatever. It's what comes out on the other side, right? Um, and so let's get serious. Let's, let's take discipleship seriously. Let's take our spiritual... I mean, my pastor would teach that spiritual rituals are the rituals of spirits. You have... Yeah right? Don't take prayer lightly. Don't take Bible study lightly. Don't take gathering. Don't be this once in six weeks rotational attendance and, and child of God. I hope people are not still doing this. Um, I'm listening to many teachers. I mean, that I don't think there's anything wrong with learning from people, but when you are eating here, eating here, eating here, eating here, the raving pastor, you are joining his online church. You are giving to his church. Meanwhile, they've not oh. seen your own, not seen your benevolence giving in your own church since. You say, I don't want to tithe to churches. I don't know what pastors are doing. I'm tithing to this online prayer platform. I'm giving my money to orphanage. Table for another day. Can we, can we settle down? Can we learn? Can, yeah. we, be, can we be discipled? Yeah. Oh. 
I mean, we say it all the time. If you have a five-year-old who is still crawling, you'll be worried. You'll be praying. You'll do everything possible. You'll take them to specialists. So if you have five years in the gospel you, and you are doing certain things, you need a specialist. Maybe PM will disciple you. you let's, let's be focused. Yeah. Um, God is not your side hustle. He's oh, your yes. He's, yes. he's your life. He's not not, my pastor will say he's not God is not a um, cake for special occasions, he's bread for daily life, yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then pie, do you get? I don't mean pie, yeah, yeah. he's not <laughs> right. <sighs> the main pie, he's not just the cross. People like me that love cross, I can eat the round of meat pie and leave meat pie for you, but Jesus is the main pie. Yeah. Um, we can't. We can't complain that there's too much decadence, immorality, problems in our world. And then, because we're not taking our spiritual lives, we are indirectly contributing to it. Because where there's light, darkness will flee. Yeah. It's not a matter of and the darkness. Flee, flee, flee. You just show up. Just show up. And so, if you are still like blue light, red light, you know, we can't really see your color. So we can assume that you are not in the real light. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. That's my advice. Let's take discipleship seriously. Let's take our work with God seriously. It is that deep. It yeah. is that serious. It's a big deal. Jesus died though. You know, when I was younger, I used to think that Jesus did not really die now. That flogging, he did not really feel it now. She be his God. Oh, did she? <laughs> he really felt <laughs> He really he died. He really yeah. felt the pain. He can't. Mm -hmm. It cannot be. P and P and your last words. How how do we? Where, what should we do from here? We are woke. We are young. We are Gen Z. Um, we are in comfort. We 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 got saved into churches with nice buildings and lights and aesthetics. We didn't do wooden chairs like I did. We didn't do. There's no light. Pastor preach with his normal voice. We didn't do that. We didn't do service under the trees like I did. We didn't do. I was baptized in a river. Some of y'all have cute pools in your churches. I was, yeah, I was baptized in a river. I remember the pants I wore that day. I was seven years old. This is a lot of information. Yeah, I remember my classes. We had VIP class on wooden chair, Monday, 5 p.m. You don't, you miss a class, you start again. Do you understand? Not this one that I say, oh, I've been busy with work. You know, the nature of my job so will I not feel, allow me. The tuning via Zoom. Yeah. How about the nature of your spirit? Can it not help you? You are doing overnight in the office. You freshen up in the office and continue the day. But overnight for Jesus is not that deep. We want to carry Jesus on our head. I think my, my, my final words would be, let's just be serious. Let's just be serious. All right. Pastor Dami said we didn't do tambourines and cards. I heard you. <laughs> let, let, let's be serious. Okay. Oh, we have swimming pools. You know what tambourine looks like. My kids definitely don't know what a tambourine looks like. Tambourine, tambourines are even the two for many use shekere. Shekere, and it's not even the shekere that you see now. That calabash with beads. Not beads, big one like this. Beads, you be holding like this. <sighs> yeah. So I mean, I I think I just want to say, get serious. Get a good pastor be a part of a good local church be committed there there's this continuous wave of um i just need a community where we can all share <laughs> see a community where all of you share and there's no pastoral authority is not a church it's not a church let me also say this being a part of an itinerant ministry is not the same as being a part of a church you need a church you need a church where people know you you need a church all right, um, get serious, have a prayer life, study your Bible, you know. Um, uh, if you need to be everything you know you need to do to grow spiritually, all right, be intentional about your growth, be intentional. Don't just say, mm, what will be, will be. You are not like that in your finances. You are not like that with your friends. You're not like that in your relationships. You're not like that when it comes to prayer meetings that change lives. 
Come on. Let's be serious. All right. That atmosphere you carry every day. That atmosphere you carry, um, that atmosphere you carry to special programs, carry it every day. That expectation, take it to your place of devotion. Take it to the place of prayer. To every day. And I dare say, if the only thing of prayer to you is prayer platforms, you don't have a prayer life yet. If the only time of prayer you have is prayer platforms, you don't have a prayer life yet. All right. If all of prayer is about you, <laughs> you need to come up higher. You need to grow up. All right. Be a part of a good church. Be committed there. Because, and many of us also don't know how to do church. Before church is finished, you have, as you say, as the pastor is rounding up, collecting offering, you are ordering your boats. No, now. Mm. No. You're ordering, and you're wondering why you are still single. But that's by the way. No, that's, that's not how it works. Like, there's a way to do church. Mm. To do church. Yeah. Right. I, I'm going to go. I will share one or two, three other things um, for those who want to stay on the call. Um, like I said earlier, I'm going to put up this live, but take it down tomorrow up to my YouTube, but I'll let you know when that's done. Thank you so, so, Thank you, so much for your time. Thank you for your words of wisdom, your words of encouragement. Thank you for being clear and simple and precise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're very grateful. Guys, help me thank Pastor Nelson. Um, thank you for doing this with us. Thank Have you, Elsie. Bye. Time. A lovely night. Bye. All right. Bye. So guys, let's let's take this thing seriously. He's he's giving a few points. I saw someone asking, um, how do we become more serious? If you need a partner, not and you know, I always say this thing about accountability partners. Don't get that kind of accountability partner that if you don't do something, they'll be like, mm, tomorrow we can do it again. Next tomorrow we can do it again. Next week we can do it again. Jesus will forgive you. Jesus understands. And so you find that you set a target for yourself and that by the end of the year, you've not even gotten up to half of that target. Fine, of course, there's room for um, you were tired today, you got home late, you were just plain lazy that day. But you need to get to that point that the Bible says, if this is the other side of it, if your eye is going to cause you to sin, remove it. We get to that point where if I'm not praying, I'm going to tell somebody, this is it's just a random example, I will pay you 5K. If I don't wake up with that, my alarm that I set at 12 midnight, I will pay you 5K if I don't pray for 30 minutes. I will listen to two messages if I promised myself I was going to listen to one and I didn't. You need to start saying things like that. Um, by 12 o'clock, I'm not going to eat until I have done X, Y, Z. You will not buy food. You will not be served food. You will not go to the cafeteria until you have done X, Y, Z. Job said, I have esteemed your word more than my necessary food. The Bible says, Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. That means there's another way to live apart from eating food. Get serious. I know that quite a number of people have been through church hurt. And that can be hard to come out of. It's like being heartbroken, maybe once, twice, three times in relationships. Every guy, every girl becomes a suspect. But that does not mean God, is, God doesn't have somebody for you. That doesn't mean everybody is bad. So what do you do? You begin to listen to a good counselor like myself. You begin to listen to PK, PM. You begin to listen to Mr. Choli, good people that help you to understand how relationships work, what to look out for, how to work on your heart. And then you trust the Lord to help you. So you seek out a good church by praying, by listening, by discerning spirits. You know, sometimes we get into a wrong relationship because we ourselves, we are wrong. So you are looking at a man or a woman through the wrong lens of yourself. But if you get yourself right, it's easier to spot a phony. So also you, if you are spiritually discerning of who Christ is in you, if you get to a church, there are certain things you say, and say, no, God is really not here. Let's get serious. When you see things that are happening around you that are not Christ-like, don't laugh about it and don't be quiet about it. Talk about it. Talk about it is not insulting or shutting the people down, but being firm and standing your ground. Don't, don't, don't blend in. Refuse. Refuse. Don't pick aesthetics. 
refuse the temptation to blend in. Refuse it at all costs. Refuse it. The Bible says that there's a way that seems right to a man. The end is destruction. And one thing I'm going to talk about, Pastor Nelson, and I forgot, was there's the spirit of the age that comes with intellect and intelligence. And things sound so interesting. You see this Instagram carousels. You see these quotable quotes from your faves, from celebs. And it sounds really right. The feminist movement. It sounds very intelligent. But there is no single backing for it in scripture. And then you begin to reason it. And you find a scripture to buttress it. You find a scripture that is convenient for you. We don't read scripture according to our preferences. We read scripture according to the interpretation of the spirit. We interpret scripture with scripture. And we interpret scripture with the spirit of God in the scripture. If you don't know, say you don't know. Ask questions. This is how you grow. Stay planted. You notice that Pastor Nelson and myself, I do all the time. My husband said in my post, my husband said, my pastor said, who are you feeding? from consistently consistently guys there's a lot to deal with elections are coming up lgbtq is queuing um pedophilias are rising bandits are rising <laughs> they are great issues we cannot be dragging have you prayed today have you read your bible today and don't cover cover your breast cover your thighs these are pedestrian issues. Let's come up higher. Thank you guys so much for your time. Um, I love you guys. I'm really excited about my next IG live. I'm not going to give the cat away. I'll be let the cat out of the bag now. But I'm really excited about my next IG live. So look out 9th of February. I'm trying to do this every second Thursday as God will help me. Thank you so much. Have a lovely night. My children are still awake for reasons best known to them. They're waiting for mommy. All right, guys. Love you. Thank you so, 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 so much, everybody. Thank you so much, darling. Babe, babe, come, 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 come. I want you to answer this question about um, intellect. Are you still here, babe? About um, intelligence and humanism. Let me see if my husband is still here real quick. Uh, Babe, are you still here? It doesn't matter wherever in the house you are. If you are still here, how do we battle this spirit of the age and humanism and intellectualism and, and balance it with the spirit and the knowledge and the truth of God? I don't know if he's still here, but I'm asking myself a question. Is he coming downstairs? Okay. I don't hear him coming. Is he coming? All right, guys. Have a lovely night. It's not. We'll discuss that at another time. All right. Take care. Bye. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 <laugh